Halloumi just unveiled new Halloumi Cloud features that your projects are going to love. Today, we'll get right into the code with IAC for automating your GitOps deployments with the newest cloud features, including scheduled deployments for automatic infrastructure provisioning, time to live stacks for automatic infrastructure teardown, and drift detection for alerting and remediation of drift between actual state in your infrastructure and desired state as defined in your Pulumi infrastructure as code. First off, however, we need to understand Pulumi deployments. So let's review. Pulumi Deployments is an infrastructure lifecycle management service. At first glance, it looks similar to common workflow pipeline tools like Jenkins, GitHub Actions, CircleCI, and other workflow automation tools. Now, I have already deployed some infrastructure, including a basic Kubernetes cluster. To utilize Pulumi Cloud Deployments, we need to start by configuring the stack deployment settings. So let's get into it. Now, here in VS Code, I've opened a repository containing the infrastructure as code for this demonstration. First, let's take a look at what we already have deployed. At this time, we have our Pulumi stack, which we're calling the Kubernetes platform, and we're using the dev stack. The first thing provisioned is a provider for the CIVO cloud, and we're using the CIVO cloud to provide a firewall, a Kubernetes cluster, and we're returning a Kubernetes provider as an output so that we can also schedule workloads to the cluster later on down the line. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the code that deployed this infrastructure. This main.py represents the entry point of our program. We're gonna skip over most of it, but I wanted to go ahead and point out this Pulumi configuration section. Here we're setting the name of our Pulumi organization, we're setting the name of our GitHub repository that stores our code, and we're returning the project and the stack names for our infrastructure as code as well. We will be using those to configure our deployment settings. Now we're gonna skip over most of the code for the infrastructure we've already deployed and focus on the deployments configuration. Now, the first thing you'll note is we use a Boolean to control the flow of our code. In this case, we are gating the Pulumi Cloud deployments configuration behind a Boolean for Pulumi Cloud deployment. Let's go ahead and enable this Boolean. We'll double check our Pulumi configuration. Sure enough. Our Pulumi Cloud deployment key is ready is set to true. Now that we've activated the code, let's go take a look at it before we actually deploy. Here at the top of the file, you can see that we are importing several different resources from the Pulumi Pulumi service package. We are defining the function that we import into our main.py. We're passing the organization name the project name, the stack name, and the repository name. Those are four keys that you should remember from our Pulumi config initialization at the top of the main.py. Now we can use those variables to actually configure our deployment settings. Taking a look at this code, we start with the arbitrary name of our resource. This is just a friendly name that helps for human identification of resources in Pulumi state and when using the Pulumi Cloud Console. Next, we're utilizing stack, project, and organization names to inform the, the Pulumi Cloud which resources this configuration maps to based on their stack name. If you specify a valid agent pool ID, you will be able to schedule the runner to execute either in your own custom defined Pulumi runners or in self-hosted Pulumi deployments runners in your infrastructure. Next, we're utilizing the GitHub integration. Now, you can use any arbitrary Git repository with basic auth or SSH authentication to deploy your code from any servers that you currently host Git services on. Alternatively, you can use GitHub integration to deeply embed the features of Pulumi deployments in your workflows. With the deployment settings GitHub args, you can define when to actually execute the deployment. 
we're going to go ahead and enable it for deploying to comment commits that go directly to main. We're also enabling the preview for pull requests. While the deployment supports generic Git server configuration and authentication with basic auth or SSH key auth, we're using the GitHub integration itself, which allows a deeper integration between Pulumi Cloud and your GitHub workflows. Here, we're enabling the deployment commits set to true so that it will run the deployment on every commit to main. And we are also enabling the preview on pull requests so that you can see the plan before you actually execute a deployment in a merged code base. With source context args, you have a few different tunables to control where your code lives in your Git repository. And we're using it right now just to track the branch main. Finally, we are returning the deployment settings configuration resource to our main.py so we can use those outputs later on in our code. After examining our code, let's go ahead and deploy. Again, this is the last time that we're running Pulumi CLI manually. Our Pulumi deploy completed. Let's take a look and see what changed. Scrolling up, we can see this plus sign indicates that we created this new resource for Pulumi deployment settings. We named it our dev deployment settings. Also in our outputs, we have a URL. This is a URL that we custom defined in our code, and it will take us directly to our deployment settings. Now here you can see more of the options available to you and the GUI interface for manually configuring these things if you're not writing the configuration in IAC yourself. Here we can control whether we're using basic Git authentication or the GitHub integration. We can choose the repository that we want to use. We can set the branch that we're tracking, and we can set the folder where the Pulumi IAC starts. In our case, we're starting at the root of the Git repository, so we don't need to specify any folders. Now, there are several other configuration options, which you can control either via the IAC code base or in the GUI. You do need to caref be careful to pick one or the other because, again, we're about to take a look at another feature to control drift or when the, or negotiating when there is a difference between what is actually configured and what is supposed to be configured according to the code base. Okay, you should have a basic understanding of Pulumi deployments now. This feature of Pulumi Cloud is foundational to the next features we will look at. With the basics covered, let's proceed. Copying from our readme MD again, we can go ahead and drop this command to enable our IAC for scheduled deployments. Let's double check our Plumi config now that we've made the new change. Here we go. Our Boolean is set to true. And you can see how that correlates to our actual Plumi infrastructure as code by looking at the Plumi stack configuration. Now here we can see that there is a line for each of the Booleans that we use to control deploy Kubernetes, our Pulumi Cloud deployment, and our Pulumi Cloud deployment schedule. Now from here, you might expect us to manually execute our Pulumi up command to deploy the new code. However, this is when our new deployments can actually show off their magic. Instead of a Pulumi up command, we're actually going to commit our git changes to GitHub. Now we can go back into our Pulumi console and see if anything's happening. We're going to take a look at for our stacks. Look here. And we can see that just a moment ago, a new deployment was started from a GitHub push. And here we have a pipeline running. It is currently installing the dependencies for our Python IAC. And our deployment was successful. Let's go take a look at the new resources. So if we jump over to update, you can see again that this update was triggered through GitHub. Now here we can see that 
these new resources are set as children of the deployment settings. All of these new scheduled deployment resources are dependent on the deployment settings existing before you can actually write them into the code. So make sure and get your dependencies set up correctly if you do this through infrastructure as code instead of the web UI. Another new output from our new IAC is this web URL that can take us to our new scheduled resources settings. But before we jump there, let's take a look at the code. Now, here at the top of our new IAC file, we are again using the Pulumi Pulumi service package, and we're importing a few different resources. We're using TTL schedule, drift schedule, deployment schedule, and Pulumi operation. Let's see how that pans out. In our function, we're once again passing an organization name, project name, stack name, and this time we're also passing the Pulumi Cloud deployment, which was the resource that we used to configure our deployment settings. This being a parent of the new resources we're creating, we have to pass that in so that it can correctly calculate dependencies. Now, first up, we have scheduled deployments. This enables scheduled automation of Pulumi Preview, Pulumi Up, Pulumi Refresh, and Pulumi Destroy operations. If we start by taking apart the code in front of us, this new Pulumi Schedule, Deployment Schedule resource, we start off again with our arbitrary name for the resource, and then we jump straight into the cron schedule. Now this cron syntax is, should be common to most sysadmins and is common annotation for describing the month, day, week, and time of running different operations. Here with our Pulumi operation, we're specifying the action to take. Now it accepts preview, update, and destroy. So for this particular resource, we are scheduling an update. This is equivalent to Pulumi up if you've already run it more than once. Again, we are also including our Pulumi Cloud organization, project, and stack names so that this schedule is attached to the right Pulumi stack IAC. Now I'll also show another operation. This time it's a Pulumi preview operation scheduled for Friday, May 17th. This is hard coded based on a very specific scheduled time. So it shows you the different ways that you can schedule either through cron or through hard coded time when the actual operation should be take, scheduled and execute. Again, we're defining which Pulumi operation to take. For this one, we're scheduling a preview. The rest of the options here should be familiar after going through the first example. Second up is drift detection and remediation. This improves visibility into your infrastructure, alerting to infrastructure changes that may leave your operations out of compliance with your intended state. Additionally, it provides the option to automatically remediate the detective drift should you choose. You'll notice this drift schedule is a unique resource separate from the other resources we've looked at so far. Again, we have the option of using the cron schedule to detect drift, and then we can tune it to either auto remediate or just notify and report on drifted detections. The other configurations here should be familiar again. Third and finally, let's look at the TTL deployments configuration. Here we define an end of life countdown clock for our infrastructure. Once this time and date rolls around, the scheduled deployment configuration will trigger a Pulumi destroy operation to automatically tear down the stack infrastructure once it's outlived its planned lifetime. Again, if we go to our stacks dashboard, we can select the stack, jump to the settings tab, and find all of these same settings available in the web UI for configuration through the console. In here, you can create or edit routines to set drift detection, time to live, and generic Pulumi up, destroy, and preview operations with a friendly user interface. Well, there you have it, a recap of Pulumi deployments and an introduction to the new deployment features, including scheduled deployments, drift detection and remediation, and TTL stacks to automatically tear down infrastructure after its planned end of life. It's once again time for me to sign off, give these new features a try, then find us on socials or community Slack and tell us how they help you. As always, go build stuff, go break stuff, and do it all with Pulumi.